Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Raising the Bar and I'm really delighted to have this lady with us today. Her name's Laura Whitworth. How are you doing, Laura? I'm very well. How are you? I'm really, really good. And, you know, we were saying before, I was really excited to have you on because I noticed, uh, you know, your interview with Jerry Marzinski. And I'm just going to just to introduce you here. You're a professional psychotherapist, clinical hypnotherapist and quantum healer. And you're the founder of Soul Center Healing Hypnosis. And uh, your website is schhofficial.com. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've got a lot to talk about, haven't we, Laura? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, where do we start? Where do we start with it? Where, where do, do we start? start? <laughs> yeah, where do we start with it? Well, I'll tell you where we will start. Okay, so let's talk about that interview with Jerry because I've had Jerry on my show, and his um, conclusions are all these schizophrenic patients that he talks to, um, you know, with the, with the voices talking to him in their own head, a little bit like the movie Nefarious. If anyone's seen that movie, he says it's not the mainstream view of chemical imbalance; it's actually entity attachments. So now we're going to sort of the trans-dimensional um, understanding of things, which is for most people, I would have thought, way outside their bubble of awareness, right? <laughs> but could you maybe start with how this started for you? Because I remember you saying that you started doing hypnotherapy and you started to trace these thoughts that these people were having and these voices people were having. And that's what led you to similar conclusions to Jerry. That's a good starting point. <laughs> Sure. So um, through my work, through hypnotizing thousands of people, and I would see them for various different reasons. Um, mm. I'm not going to name all of those because everybody knows what you go to see hypnotherapists for. Um, but I also was uh, working in the quantum realm as well. So doing past life regression and connecting people to the higher self and that kind of thing. I would notice in many sessions that um, the client would change when you would get them under hypnotherapy and the person that you've been speaking to um, in the psychotherapy part of the session at the beginning was a totally different person to the person that you would end up speaking to whilst under hypnotherapy. And obviously I'm trained in all of the um, dissociative identity disorders and dissociation and all of that kind of things, split psyche, multiple personality disorder. So it wasn't that that I was dealing with. It was something else. And these voices that would come out of people, um, they would sometimes just swear and cuss. They would grunt. They would spit. Um, and it was one particular session that I had that I realized that I was dealing with something quite different um, where my work took a real turn. And this is where I started to focus really solely on this stuff. And that was when I did a particular session with a man um, who had very strange energy when he came to see me. Let's just leave it at that. Um, but when I got him into the session, he actually, uh, the voice that came out of him was entirely different, very, very deep, very, very evil sounding. And he actually levitated off of my bed. And this was in real life. <laughs> and so at that point, I was like, okay, I need to actually face this head on now. And, I was going to say the head, the head didn't do a 360 or anything like that, did it? That would have been, I, would, I think I would never have to kill yeah, myself if that happened. <laughs> it was probably the scariest thing that's ever happened to me in real life in a face-to-face -face session. And I've had some pretty, you know, crazy things happen <laughs> over the years. Um, so basically what I started to do at that point was I thought, right, this happens with so many clients, not all. So I'm going to start mapping who these clients are, what their traumas are in their life, what their physical symptoms are, emotions, behaviours. And I'm going to map out what the voices say when the voices start to talk and what, what we find out in the session. So over the course of my work, this is basically what I learned. So I'm going to try and shrink it down because there's a lot here um, for, the, for the purposes of this. The world that we live in is not what we have been told. So we think that we are the top of the food chain and we aren't. Mm. That's basically uh, the big, the big uh, mic drop. Um, as there are so many different dimensions that we are aware of on this planet, you know, we have the first dimension with water, air, uh, fire, earth. And then we go into the second dimension where we have all of the fish and the animal lifetimes and then we come up into the third dimension where we will have the human lifetimes the lifetimes that we are living now there is a dimension that's above us that feeds into us all of the dimensions are stacked on top of each other 
So our dimension feeds up into that dimension, just as we feed on the animal kingdom, as the animal kingdom feeds on the grass and the water and so on and so forth. Now, this is quite a big um big topic. So for anyone that's interested in studying this in more detail, I would recommend reading uh, the raw material, um, The Law of One, book one specifically, which explains this in more detail. But basically, when we split off from source as pieces of source that are making our way back to source on a journey through the dimensions, we have the choice as a soul when we become individualized, so when we realize that we are an individualized piece of source, and that happens normally at the end of the animal kingdom and when you come into the um, the earth lifetimes, the human lifetimes, we have the choice to decide whether we want to, to follow the path of service to others, which is the positively polarized path, which is the light, or service to self, which is the negatively polarized path, which is the path of the dark. Now, in the human world, in the third dimensional plane of existence, if you like, you have both. So you have some humans that are following the path of the light, service to others, and you have some humans that are following the path of the dark, service to self. And we're we're all kind of lumped together. And the reason for that is it causes a catalyst for soul growth. It allows the narcissists, the ones that are following the dark path, to be, become even more evil because they've got some really nice people to boss around. And it allows those of us that want to follow the path of the light, uh, it gives us a, um, an evil person to all rally, rally against, if you like. And we all group together as light and off we go up the dimensions. This cycle has happened many, many times on Earth. If you look back to um, the ancient uh, paintings and the ancient histories, the ancient texts, Mm -hmm. you will see that there are animals such as unicorns and fairies and um, Mm -hmm. mermaids and dragons and all of those creatures that we now say are myth and legend. They're not myth and legend. The reason that we used to talk about them is because we as human beings used to vibrate higher. So our energy centers, which if you take white light and you fractalize it through a prism, refracts out into the color of the rainbows, color of the rainbow, we have an energetic body that is the fuel for our physical body. And back in the day, we used to vibrate higher. Mm. When we vibrated higher, we plugged up into the positively polarized upper fourth dimension which emits light. And this is where the fairies and uh, the unicorns and all of those incredible creatures are. What's happened is due to, um, and many, many people will dispute over when this happened, but let's say for argument's sake, it was at the time uh, of Atlantis when people were messing around with things that they shouldn't be messing around with. And we ended up attracting in dark beings to this world who got in, they started to whisper into the minds of man and the consciousness of man and woman fell. So at that point, the light that is contained within our energetic bodies, which is given to us from the earth, but it is affected by the interface it has between the energetic body and the mental body. Mental body is thoughts, is consciousness. It was affected and the resonance of the light in our energy centers lowered. So if you imagine, if you will, seven parts of the most beautiful, vivid paint, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Mm. And every time you feel um, sadness, pain around sadness, drop a, a spot of black paint into that orange pot stir it around every time somebody humiliates you or makes you feel guilty or makes you feel shame those emotions drop a spot of black paint into the yellow stir it around every time you feel terror scared fear lack drop a spot of black paint into the red one stir it around it's not long before the energy centers of the human lowers And we are a byproduct. Our physical body is the direct representation of the energy that we hold in our energetic body. What that then means is when our energy centers are vibrating lower, 
we plug up into the negatively polarized upper fourth. Now, that dimension is parasitical. It doesn't emit light like the uh, positively polarized uh, upper fourth. It consumes light. These guys need a battery. They consume light. What I found in my work is that darkness is only dark because it consumes light. Think of all of the black holes in the universe. Mm. The light gets consumed, gets sucked into the black holes. So it is light that fuels the darkness. So what I found through all of the work and the study that I did is that the traumas that we face as humans cause our energetic body to vibrate lower which then makes us a magnetic match in resonance to these beings that exist in a higher dimension than us, but that are negatively polarized. So then they attach to our chakras, to our light, and they feed off of it. So we are, we are fueling the beings that exist in that negatively polarized higher dimension. But yeah. once they're attached they affect us in consciousness. So they don't only take our light, they affect our thoughts, feelings, and emotional behaviors. So what you get, somebody that's been heavily parasited upon, and think about how many times we're traumatized as human beings in our life. Just think about that. All of us have got something that's happened at some point that has um, caused the light in our energy centers to lower. Mm. And so what you will find is, most human beings have got something attached somewhere and that entity that's attached will not only consume that one particular ray of light which destabilizes that person's entire spectrum mm. so they're no longer a rainbow they've got one ray of light missing but it also affects their emotions their feelings their behaviors the thoughts that they have in their head and for Jerry's work, you mentioned Jerry Mazinski earlier on. For Jerry's work, what he was dealing with there, the people that can hear the voices, is their third eye has been opened to such an extent, and this can be through meditation, but normally it would be through drugs, uh, psychedelics, or cannabis, so that when the third eye is open, they can hear mm. the entities that are attached to them energetically. And the reason these beings say such low frequency things and horrible things like kill yourself, do this, do that, is because they're trying to produce an emotion in the human, like fear, mm. if they're attached to the root, sadness, if they're attached to the sacral, guilt or shame or humiliation, if they're attached to the solar plexus, because when the human feels that emotion, it mm. releases that low frequency light that the entity feeds off of yeah. so this is a huge deal yeah. it's that's massive. like monsters inc it's like exactly like monsters inc you know the disney yeah that, yeah that's exactly yeah. it because no, the that's monsters exactly go it. go through like that a membrane they go through the door and they go into the, the kids world the human world they they make the kids scream and then they collect the scream in a little bottle and well they collect the scream it gets into a bottle and they that's their fuel for the monsters world isn't it it's that they're basically telling you in disney they are telling you everything in Disney, but yeah. they put it in such a way whereby everyone sits there in the cinema eating the popcorn <laughs> yeah. going, oh, it's a really good film, isn't it? Well, who was your favorite character? Not realizing that by us doing that, we're actually giving consent to the screwed up way that our world is managed. Mm. So then when you understand that piece, you understand everything. Because why is our world so messed up? Why are all of these things happening? Why don't we have world peace? Why yeah. is there constantly war after war after war? Why is everybody hooked on medication? It's to keep humans so that they never deal with their trauma. It's to keep them perpetually traumatized. Mm -hmm. It's to keep them perpetually in fear, lack, sadness. Um, and there's different types of entities as well. This is when it gets really complex and really interesting. All right, how, let me, I've got a question on that. Okay, so if they're lower beings, they're lower vibrational beings, how come they're in a higher, vib a higher dimension than us? Because it's negatively polarized. Yeah, but how did they even get up there in the first place, even in a polarized? Yeah. So they get up there in the first place by being 95% uh, evil. So 
the world is cyclical. Um, human civilizations rise and fall, and not just humans, different beings before us on this earth have risen and fallen. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, people say, oh, the, the dinosaurs were exterminated, they were killed mm -hmm. off. Well, in that cycle, there will have been a, a bipedal humanoid that ascended in that cycle there's many 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 beings in the upper dimensions and there are positively polarized ones and negatively polarized ones so earth if you think of earth in terms of real estate in the galactic universe earth is held currently it's held by the negatively polarized upper fourth density and unfortunately we come under that density so the only way we can get out of the control of these beings is to deal with our trauma, is to clean and clear our energy, our chakras, is to look at our diet, is to change the way that we think. We've got to reprogram our minds, our brains to be our, our biggest uh, fan in this life as opposed to being uh, our biggest inner critic there's many many things that need to be done but basically we have to vibrate higher vibrate back in the colors of the rainbow as we used to so then we will literally sidestep them in frequency we literally just move slightly out of their resonance and they can't feed off of us anymore it's like retuning the um, yeah, i was gonna say a radio station like if you get interference that's when you know you're kind of like interfering with these entities but if you move it slightly you get the the pure radio station that you were after yeah that kind of thing isn't it that's Can it. I just ask it just i mean I'm, I'm making notes as i go along there's so many questions that i have but i mean for instance um chakras you mentioned chakras there so in the because you can't if you were to tell like your average normal your average mainstreamer like what a chakra is you can't see it can you i mean what how would you how would you definitely say to someone that we have chakras? Because I actually did a, a session with someone and he re he said he removed my chakras for me. He said it, it's a fake overlay. He says you don't want it. You know, you don't want to be fragmented. He says you want to just be, you know, so he actually he removed them. For <laughs> so I'll give you some more information on that. <laughs> so many years ago, before mm. the energy centers yeah. uh, pulled themselves into the rainbow colors, we used to have white light energy centers all the mm. way through. So the white light would plug down into the planet. The white light would plug up through the crown to source. And we would be a conduit of the light all the way mm. through. Yeah. The first fall in consciousness happened when the energy centers stopped working together as a team. Mm. So the energy centers, think of them as uh, galaxies in your own body. Mm. The universe is micro to the macro and the same patterns are there to be seen in, in every area of the universe that you look at. So inside of you, you have your own universe and your energy centers are galaxies of light. And those galaxies of light provide light to the meridians and the wider body. And the whole body needs that light. Mm. If you don't have the light in the body, so say, for example, if the light is siphoned away by an entity who takes the light instead that's when you will start to find physical disease manifesting in the body and this is something else that i didn't mention um, when i was giving an overview earlier on but most people will find me and come to me when they're dying it will get to that point and mm. they'll say to me i, I want to live i've got a family um i've been looking at alternative therapy i found you can you help me and I will listen to all of their traumas. I will work out which of their chakras are parasited upon. I will remove those entities. I will plug the light back into their body. I will help them to move out all of the dense energy and trauma that they've carried. And then they will heal completely and fully and totally. The body has the complete capacity to regenerate from any illness, all illness and diseases is telling you that something is out of balance energetically in the body and yes there are physical factors as well you know your diet has a big impact on on the um the vitality and well-being of the body as well but in regards to okay mm -hmm. when you look at the planet you can't see the planet's chakras but you can see that she's alive mm. you can see that the food that she grows is what we need to eat 
to survive. Without our Mother Earth, we don't have a life. We're dead because we need her energy. And it's the energy that's the interface between her and us. As humans, we always think of ourselves as separate. We always think, oh, I'm a human and I've got this career and I've got this house and I have this car. But actually, we are a part of Mother Earth. And if you want proof of that, okay, I'll give you some proof. The oxygen that you breathe comes from the trees. The carbon dioxide that you breathe out, the trees need for their photosynthesis processes. Mm. The bronchial tubes in the lungs are the shape of a tree. The patterns on the palms of your hands are the same patterns that you'll find on the leaves of the trees. Your fingertips, the patterns on your fingertips are the patterns that you'll find in the cross section of a tree. Yeah. You're Earth. We're one and the same. I've also, have you noticed that we're born from the Earth, but then we go back into the Earth, which means that the vegetation actually eats us. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and that is the, that's that's the cycle. cycle. Yeah. That's the absolute cycle. And mm. that's why um, it's very, very important that there is a cycle, that there is a movement of energy up the dimensions and then back into the earth and that it does continue to flow and it does continue to cycle because that is life. Because, you know, the, the arguments are, oh, you know, we're damaging the earth, you know, we're, we're treating it badly. But then the earth eats us as f- as food, doesn't it? Well, it it takes us back in because we are yeah. a part of it. Yeah, exactly. So we are one and the same with Earth. So to say that we're correct, you know, negatively affecting the Earth, we are a product of the Earth. You know, so it's it's so, a, yeah. So some may say that humans are a part. If you think of Earth as a cell, yeah. like a, a cell in the human body, some may say that humans are a part of the cell of Earth that has begun to go cancerous. because we have begun to disconnect from her and to forget that we are a part of her don't tell Um, bill gates that whatever you do (laughs) i'm I'm not interested in him in in any way shape or form don't don't go telling klaus schwab and bill about that otherwise that'll uh i won't be speaking to them anytime soon that's for sure (laughs) (laughs) don't give them any ideas though um but no i've heard that as well i've heard that technically we act as as parasites you know but uh, i'd rather not see us like that I'd rather i'd rather see us as, as the as light as you said divine light that's what we're supposed to be we're supposed yeah. to be just like a tree only our root mm. is not connected it's not static in one place so we have a cord that connects us to earth but we can move around mm. so we're supposed to be moving around her surface keeping her healthy and well and yeah. instead, we've been doing the exact opposite. Mm. I was looking at some guy on our road the other day laying a new um, surface of tarmac, all that black stuff over the floor. And I was just thinking to myself, yeah, if you look at it from a higher perspective, humans are most definitely a part of the cell of Earth that's gone bad. It's gone bad. And we need to get ourselves back in alignment with her. If we do not, we're going to get left behind. So it's really, really important that we start to resonate back in those higher colours. Then once you've got the colours of the rainbow back in your energy centres and your energy centres are working together, yeah, I, I do believe at some point in the future there will be um, a wave of light that occurs that will separate out the two bands, the two frequencies of energy. So at the moment, we're all in a third dimensional pot. We're all deciding which way we want to go. There's some people that want to go positively polarized. Some want to go negatively polarized. If you don't choose, you'll end up getting lumped in with the negatively polarized. Mm. It's coming towards the time where the graduation happens again. So where we because we've spent 26,000 years in this density, can now move up to the next uh, layer of experience. So we will. Mm. But you will either go up to that positively polarised upper 
upper oh, yeah. uh, vibration or the negatively one negatively polarized one so pay attention mm. to what it is that you're plugging into in this world at this time because it's really really important i wonder if that's something that happens in the next lifetime or that's something that actually happens now because i don't know if you noticed in the last four years i've seen i'm seeing this breakaway where there's like two alternate realities that are forming in exactly the same physical space there's the ones yeah. that are kind of moving along the um the path of yeah, go along with this one world um, government, the sort of totalitarian dystopia, where we go onto it, we get jacked into the cloud, social credit system, um, you know, let big brother, big daddy sort of tell us everything. But then there's also like a breakaway of people that want to go back to basics, maybe go back to the land, more sovereign based thinking, and they can see what was going on and all the, the, the clown vid stuff, you know, whereas the other ones were all like queuing up around the block for it, you know, for the uh, you know what into, into the arm. And you can yep. literally be in the same physical space as your friends and family, but actually be seeing two completely different realities. Is this almost like the start of that happening in, in, in reality now and living life? Yeah, absolutely. So if we go back to that analogy of the earth being a cell, yeah. the earth is going through a, a process of mitosis. Yes. So it's growing a new cell. Right. And it's discarding right. the old cell. Lord, that's so, so deep. That is, that's unbelievable. It's deep, yeah. man. It's that's really deep. deep. Yeah, it but, is. but it's true. That's what's going on. So mm. the new cell will be born out of those of us who align with the, the energy of the new cell. So when that new world is born, we go with her. If we're plugged in, in the, the same vibratory resonance as her, all of these people that have taken what we were just talking about and are plugging into the AI and, yeah, oh, right. let's you know, let's create AI art and um, eating all of the crap that's out there to be eaten. They are going into the the dead cell, if you like, the discarded cell, and that will be completely taken over by AI. Now, there's something that I ought to mention um, that will further add weight to the interview that you did um, with, I believe it was John O'Looney. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The funeral so, diet, yeah. Yeah. So the um the the clots and the things that he was finding in the physical bodies of humans, I can talk about that from an energetic perspective. Because when I work on people, I, I if I open my third eye, I can see their body energetically. So what this AI um, that they've been trying to get into people's bodies is doing is it's building an artificial nervous system that runs throughout the body of the human. It's nanotechnology, so minute technology that is introduced into the body and it takes all of the dead cells, all of the viruses, all of the molds, all of the yeasts that's been actively building up in people's bodies for years anyway, because they eat utter rubbish. And it builds networks all the way through the body um, that are artificial and connected with AI. The ultimate aim is to bypass the organic nervous system of the human and plug that uh, artificial nervous system into the AI hub that is attempting to take over this world. For everybody that I work on that's had that, they have white AI spiders that have gathered all the way around the third eye and the pineal gland. And they will be the people that if those spiders are left, will end up with the blood clots in the brain, the brain tumors, what we're seeing a huge um, increase of at the moment. I actually have someone in my own family mm. um, that's just been operated for having one the size of an egg. Mm. And the people that are dying of uh myocarditis, pericarditis, that's because these same spiders will gather around the heart. They're gathering in those two spaces, these AI spiders, because they know that the third eye and the heart in the human are the portals by which you can exit this realm. They are uh, the way that you will achieve higher consciousness. So you achieve higher consciousness through having an open and extended heart chakra mm. and also through being able to see more than what you are. Mm. Having that um, ability to connect with all that is rather than just, oh, I'm my own person in this reality and isn't it great? So 
when I work on people, I have to remove the AI spiders from the um, third eye and the heart if they've had that. Yeah. I have to remove the cord that's plugging them into the AI timeline. And we have to remove the physical stuff out of the body as well. And if you do that, they will have a shot at regenerating and um, the immune system will be able to take over. But the reason why John was reporting that there's so many cancers that have come out of balance and um you know, sudden deaths. And it's because everybody's immune system is busy trying to deal with the problem of this artificial nervous system that's being built. Mm. So any cancer that was over here that was being contained by the body, oh, we've not got time to deal with that. Have you seen this? It's just arrived. We've got to deal with this. Yeah. So pe people are um, all of a sudden got random autoimmune conditions that have never appeared before cancer that was in remission is popping back up all of these different aggressive cancers as well is because the mm. immune system is overtaxed in the human and the cancer itself is trying to heal it that's the thing right so the cancer's job is to actually accumulate all the toxins in and one keep space. it correct and yeah. keep it together in a sack and what's the first thing that the, yeah, the human does oh let's take a biopsy we're going to cut yeah, this no. sack open and then you and just release, release all the toxins again yeah it's like a, it's like a garbage um, bag isn't it you try that's what the cancer does it tries to accumulate well, that's tumors anyway it tries to accumulate all the toxins it's trying to actually heal you but we Correct. see it the wrong way don't we we see cancer is the wrong way yeah. yes yeah. and a lot a lot of that cancer starts through emotional trauma through you the the thoughts that you're cycling mm -hmm. around over and over and over so in many of my clients if anybody tells me they've got cancer of the womb or uh, fallopian tubes or ovaries then that to me tells me they've got a sacral entity they've mm. got no light going into their orange chakra but they've also probably got a, um, a negative relationship with their mother or they've had a sexual trauma at some point where, where they've had something happen to them sexually that they they didn't want to happen and so you start to track those physical mm. symptoms back in the body and then you start to work out where that person's raw spot is you help them to heal it you remove the entity you plug the light back in and then when you've done all of those things in like a fusion the human can heal because they realize oh that's why I got that in my body yeah I, I was pretty bitter over that and I did kind of cycle over it in my mind every single day for 30 years since it happened. But I've realized that's what created the cancer in that area. So I'm not I'm not going to do that anymore. And then that person gets their life back. Mm. So so this the stuff that I teach, I teach people all over the world uh, to do what I do. And the sessions that I do with people, they are life changing. But aside from that, the information that I talk about every single human on this planet needs to know yeah they need to know this stuff because it's how we take our energy and our lives back it's how mm. we retune our frequency so we're listening to the station that we want to listen to and not the stuff that they're forcing us to listen to and when enough of us have done that when enough of us are clean and clear, we're vibrating higher, we're ignoring what they're saying, we're not listening to it, we're not showing any of our attention to it, we're creating our own worlds, we're going back to living off the land, heart-centered, you know, communities. Mm. At that point, one day, we will realize we've been separated. Yeah. They're not even part of our reality anymore. Well, they'll go into the smart cities. We'll actually see the physical expression of that divide where they actually like queuing up to go into those uh, smart cities. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll be, I reckon we'll probably go to the land, I'm guessing back to the land, you know, and uh, going yeah. back to basics and, f and growing our own fruit and veg and, you know, foraging and I don't know, yep. and forming communities again, maybe under a different kind of um, paradigm of community, community-based um, service to each other but I don't know what that looks like you know yet but still yet to come to being isn't it and that sounds to me like heaven yeah that's my, <laughs> that's my idea of heaven <laughs> I've always said like I'm happy to go off the grid but at least let me take an iPad with me <laughs> oh you can <laughs> keep your iPads I just want to live with groups of other like-minded humans mm. and watch the children running around free and happy um allow yeah. humans to be humans because we've been interfered with as a species for so long. so long and you're totally right in what you've just said 
the next stage of this is those that have been infiltrated by the AI that's taken that, that's yeah. got these artificial nervous systems, they will be drawn to these smart c- cities. They won't be able to resist. It's to a bit like that space. bad guy from, um, what, what's it called? Rocket. What's that guy that is the, you know, the Disney, um, Wreck-It Ralph. Hang yeah. On, I'll, I'll edit this in. No, the, the bad guy. Because <laughs> no, I always like to add oh, in no. little... Yes. I yeah, yeah, no, it's, you, yeah, the, the one bit with the... the end. With... Yeah, the, the bit at the end went... where um, he gets attracted by by this light, and he and he knows it's bad for him. And he's trying to resist it, but he still goes into it anyway. It's going to be a little bit like that. There's going to be no no yeah. free will in that moment. They'll be because they're kind of jacked into the AI, aren't they? They're influenced so much by it. Um, but there's another film as well that tells you a lot in terms of what you need to know uh, in these oh, times. Yeah. Who's that? And this one again, it's another Disney film. It bombed. It absolutely oh, bombed <laughs> the box office for good yeah. reason because they didn't want people to watch it. Yeah. And it's called Strange World. Oh, right. And it's literally about, you think they're humans to start off with. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to give it away, but it literally shows you mm. uh, everything that I've just explained to you about these artificial nervous systems that are AI that are currently being created in the bodies of people. Um, yeah. And it, it shows you the being actually being killed um by the by the ai because are you saying then that you know you said the ai spiders that's all happening in the astral isn't it it's and... happening in the energetic and the etheric okay so am i when i use the term astral is that incorrect then is that because i'm sort of thinking that that's that dimension that's interfering is that right or is that something slightly separate well astral astral is normally what you would refer to in terms of um the space that you go into when you leave your body at night time right. um when you are sleeping so the soul gets bored um while the 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 biological entity the biological form needs to sleep to repair to regenerate Mm. the soul gets bored so the soul goes goes and plays in the astral but there are many many levels and layers to the astral as well which builds up through the dimensions um as you speak but when i refer to those ai spiders um i suppose you could say they're they're in the astral but i just use the terminology they're energetic, that they are um, attached to the energetic and the etheric body. The astral body is its own separate body. Oh, so the etheric stretches all the way out to the to the 4D where there's the good and the bad, basically the, the polarity. Say that, say that again but, for me. So our own human bodies, we have an etheric body and that stretches out all the way to the fourth dimension where you've got the negative and the positive polarity where you've got the good and the bad entities. Our energy is far more wider extending than anybody has any concept of in regards to just this body people have no idea it's like Mm. some people can walk into a room and you know that person's walked into a room before you even see them Mm. and it's because you felt their energy come into the room Mm. and that's one of the things that I teach people to do is to read energy to read people's energy don't just listen to what they're saying read their energy you can tell a lot from a person just by watching them and um, how they react in a situation. The things that aren't said and the energy uh, that's being emitted as well. Going back to that Strange World film, Mm. just want to mention this because I think this is very important. The reason why the being dies is because it's being attacked by its own immune system. And that's because the AI has formed um, a barrier around the heart. <clears throat> so the immune system begins to attack the AI that's around the heart because it's trying to protect the heart. But then mm-hmm. through doing that, the heart starts to build a barrier, places fluid there, builds a barrier because it's being attacked by the immune system, which are very real live creatures on a micro level when you look at that level. I know it's hard for us to imagine because we're so big. And then eventually it's actually the person's own immune system that kills them, not the AI, because of the attack of the immune system and the fluid that the heart places there. And that's what's causing all of the myocarditis and the pericarditis that you see now um, with people that have got damage due to, to that. So the AI spiders are happening in the etheric, but then in the physical body, that's represented by um like atrophy of the of let's say the heart or the the brain or cancers yeah i see now it's like yeah it's corresponding yeah in that way 
Yeah. Because if if your third eye is shut down and your heart chakra is shut down mm. and you've got AI around that area as well, then the physical body will start to reflect the energetic changes. That's why it works the opposite way. So if we take these entities away and plug the light back in, the physical body then reflects the energetic changes. So it responds positively. That's so interesting because I've actually heard that, you know, if if you if your heart closes, then it will it will actually inflate, it will um uh, expand you know like um what, what's the term um you know with the myocarditis the inflamed heart because it's like a close it's actually responding to the closing of the heart is that right that kind of thing so when the heart chakra closes down okay. yeah and there's no energy going in there the heart itself then has to work so much harder mm. because mm. it's not got the energy it's like a car trying to run without petrol yeah. So all of these humans that are walking around that have got these entities attached that are from the negatively polarized upper fourth density that can attach because their chakras are vibrating lower and the chakras are what create the physical body. There's an interface there. These people then, they have no light going into their body whatsoever. So the body starts to become diseased. And so then they start to, to get cancers and, you mm. know, really, really terrible diseases occur in the body because there's no light i would say to anybody no matter what disease you've got come see me yeah. work with me and we'll reverse it because i understand the reasoning behind how all of this works all you have to do to get rid of disease in the body is to get rid of the parasitical uh, entities that feed off of us just as we feed off of the dimensions below her mm. below us and plug that light back in. Then what the cells do, you imagine being a little being on a micro level that lives inside of a world with no light. So everything's terrible. Mm. Everything becomes diseased and awful. You imagine the day that the light returns. That would be like a miracle, wouldn't it? Mm, yeah, of course, yeah. And so all of the little beings go, oh, mm. thank God. We thought it was over. You know, we thought that it was always going to be this way. And the light has returned quick. Let's start repairing everything. Let's start regenerating everything. Isn't it wonderful? And so the body starts to respond to those changes and health returns in the body because the light has returned. So you're supposed to have the, the vibration of the rainbow running through the body to start off with clean and clear chakras. Once you've done that, you can then, those chakras can then work as a team. And when they work together as a team, you will have white light running through the body. And in my opinion, that is ascension. So for people that understand what ascension and new earth is, that is ascension. That is the ascension of the human. When you are clean and clear from the parasitical energies, that is basically the other timeline that you can go up if you want but if you want to experience the light, if you want to live in a peaceful world, mm. if you want to um, to graduate or to evolve into a world that you've always dreamed of, which is like heaven on earth, because everybody's heart centered and works together and is loving, mm. then this is the work that you need to do. And yeah. this is the work that I do with people. And it's also funny that, you know, um, the LGBT um, rainbow flag is like an inversion of the chakra colors, isn't it? I'm sure that's, you know, by design. They have to take everything and make us hate it. So yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up because it's true. So that will put many people off the colors of the rainbow when the colors of the rainbow, what we need. Think about Disney films again. Yeah. Or Disney, <laughs> Disney's, uh, Disney. <laughs> Disney's getting a bad rap today. But think about Disney films. Yeah, They always depict evil through the color green. Always depict evil through the color green. Oh, yeah. That's like the heart color of the heart, isn't it? Yes. Heart chakra, heart yeah. energies. Mm. And that's because for them, it is evil. It is to them, yeah. They yeah. don't have it. Yeah, Wicked Witch, Goblins. Yeah, I'm trying to think yeah. of any others. Yeah. They, can't, they can't understand green. They can't understand it because they've never had it. They close that down. I'm sure they were telling us a lot in Wizard of Oz as well with the Emerald City. And, you know, I'm sure in, even in yeah. Return to Oz, she had to find some a green object or something, you know. It's all there, isn't it? And they it's will there, say... Isn't it? They're telling you. They're kind of yeah. telling you, aren't they? They're see seeping it out for you to work it out. Yeah, they'll say, well, we've told you. It's not our fault you didn't yeah, work yeah. it out. 
Yeah, we did. Do, it, it was in movies, but you know that's the, that's the that's the game, though, isn't it? They they put yeah. the truth in movies and lies in the news. That's how they do it, isn't it? It's exactly right. Yeah. But the color green is always depicted as evil in Disney, and that's because the negatively polarized ones they'll have a healthy root, they'll have a healthy sacral, they'll have a very healthy solar plexus because they're evil, they're a narcissist. They'll have a healthy uh, throat because they're used to bossing people around and they'll probably have a really good third eye as well because they're connected into the esoteric, the occult, but they will have no green. And that's where we will always um, be able to. You want to say defeat, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I do, <laughs> but I'm not like, going to. I'm not going to use that one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh my God, it's like yeah. you're reading my mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to not say defeat. That's yeah. why we'll always have an edge because we've yeah. got access to another ray of light yeah. that we can use that strengthens us. And that is the green ray energy. It's very, very important. Is it the, it's the most important one as well, isn't it? I would say it's the most important one. And if it is actualized in the human, so if the heart chakra is open, then the human will begin to think with their heart and not with their head. And that's when the changeover occurs. That's when the human is no longer hackable. Once the heart chakra is open and you begin to think with your heart, they can't hack you, you know, anymore. Laura, you know what's funny? I, I, I've already said this in past episodes, but um, so I might not include it, but I actually created a philosophy called social heart history that's what all of us must do now anybody that is awakened and aware at this point mm. in time needs to help other people to be able to connect at the heart mm. and um vibrate higher and we've we've got to it's a frequency thing as well it's a resonance thing it's yeah. an energy thing we've got to be able to tune ourselves so strongly Mm. And this is the key. So strongly away from the song that they're playing that we can't hear it anymore. Mm. And that's <laughs> just that's just yeah. brought happy, happy feet into my head. Oh, my oh, God. No. How many more Disney's today? can we throw into it? <laughs> <laughs> you got me thinking about Disney's now as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure there's loads. There? <laughs> there well, is. I was going to say, um, is it is it true? Some people say that if you get into a high enough vibration, then no one can really get get at you like these negative forces can't get at you would you agree with that or do you still think that um everyone's susceptible on a, on a daily basis to these sort of entity attachments if you get yourself into a high enough vibration and you keep yourself there then you are absolutely protected and they can't come anywhere near you but that is the work and that's what i try and educate my students on it's what i try and educate my clients on as well if i or if one of my practitioners mm. helps you to heal, and we're not saying we're doing the healing because it's always you as an individual that heals. Yeah. It's just us that help you enter that space. If you if you um, work with us and we clean and clear your energy and uh, we remove these entities, we get rid of all of the AI, we plug you back into the positively polarized earth so that you're plugged up into the positively polarized um, upper fourth density and ready to go. That is how we can leave you after this session where we've worked together today. But moving forwards, it's up to you to keep those energy centers clean and clear. And this is where the work truly starts because in your daily life, everything is thoughts, everything is consciousness. That's that's the, the way that you see the world, isn't it? And so if you choose to take something that somebody says and if you choose to allow it to humiliate you, then that will lower the resonance in the solar plexus. If you choose something that you hear or see to make you feel sad, that's mm. going to lower the resonance in the sacral and so on and so forth. So it's a different way of being that humans actually have to adopt. And that is we have to understand that everything that goes on out there, it's not anything to do with you as a person. Mm. When someone says hor something horrible to you, it's not because it's nothing to do with you. They don't know who you really are. It's to do with how they feel inside because they feel miserable. Mm. They feel overworked. They feel underpaid. They feel tired. They've got no energy because they've got an artificial nervous system building up in the body that they don't know <laughs> about. You know, all of these things are going on. So don't give somebody else the keys to rob your house. You and only you have got that power and you 
hold that power on a daily basis and make sure that you don't let anybody else take that power away from you. Um, it's so important. That's the work. That is the work. It's on a daily basis, keeping your thoughts yeah. high vibrational. Is it not a, valuable to kind of go through that though and have the, have that humiliation, have that shame? Because I find that I developed through that and I, I sharpened through that. And then it, in the past, I might have reacted to it and gone into a low place. Now, if someone tries something on me now, it's almost like war off a duck's back type of thing. Like I'm, But I wouldn't have got yeah. to that had I not have gone through all those dark experiences. So is it not valuable to kind of go into the quagmire to then learn the lessons like the school of hard knocks to then come out of it? Or are you saying just get into high vibration and straight away? No, you. this is a process. And yeah. I wouldn't be able to sit here and talk about the things I'm talking about if I hadn't had some serious, you know, yeah. horrendous things happen to me in my life. It, it's the darkness that always breaks open the seed, isn't it? it it's yeah. that, that pain that breaks open the seed. But what I'm saying to humans right now is, now is an era on earth where humans have got to look back like I'm looking back on all of the things that have happened in our lives and not let them define mm. or guide where we're going to go in the future. We've got to heal and th almost thank those traumas for the gift that they were. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Gratitude's a big one to lubricate the process, I've noticed, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the space that you need to move into. But that's what helps you open your heart chakra as well. And then so, opening, the, opening the heart. I would say it's a, it's a balance between opening, the, learning to open the heart once you've been hurt, because the the easiest thing is to to go into your shell and never open it again. You know, when everyone gets hurt, they kind of they're a little bit more protective. But it's to still be able to open it, but still have the boundaries with people. I think that's yeah. that's the kind of the the, the balance point, isn't it? Because some some people are just like, yeah, just let everyone in. You know, the whole thing about inclusivity, just you know, tolerance of everything. Just like let let yeah. the whole let the whole world come in you know there's a balance between openness and reception and actually boundaries this is what masculine feminine is about you know too much masculine it's like atomized it's blocking out it's it's all boundaries but then all feminine is no boundaries all reception all exception you know just let it all in inclusive inclusivity everything but there's yeah. no boundaries so it's just it's just you know you mentioned about the paint you know there's a reason what in the rainbow they're each individual autonomous color next to each other if we put all those colors together, it creates a gray sludge. You know, true diversity and true inclusivity still needs to have separation. It still needs to have boundaries in there. Otherwise, it's just a, it's just a, a, a mush, isn't it? I would agree that you have to have um, energetic and emotional boundaries, boundaries for sure. Yeah. Because there are some people in this world that don't want to heal. Mm. They want to stay in their place of pain. Mm. And if you're if you've committed to growing your own soul and that's the path that, that you're on, at some point you will have to make some very, very hard decisions to let some people go because those toxic people yes, yes, yes. do not want to heal. And that's their journey that they're on. And there's no judgment there from me because we've all been on that journey at some point. But at this point in time, the people that I want to help are the people that want to heal, they want vibrate it. higher, grow. Yeah. and ascend and 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 leave in into that higher frequency where we can start learning new things heart energy you know what can be done with the heart when humans uh all come together and work mm -hmm. together with a common goal that's the area that i'm in, interested yeah. in moving forwards i i don't want to play the same lessons <laughs> and the same things for Very another 26000 years i know <laughs> But I've been I, here long enough. I know. I was going to say, let's say that we, let's say we're going on the understanding of we, we're reincarnating to kind of, let's just go with that theory that we're like reincarnating to learn lessons and then eventually we're going to like learn the ultimate lesson and, and transcend. If we've been here and just kept on reincarnating, let's say hundreds of times, thousands of times, is it not slightly kind of naive of us to think this time I'll do it? You know, let's say you, let's say you failed. 10,000 times in a row is it not a bit naive to think this time I'll do it I mean what do you think what do you think's changed in this lifetime that you got it wrong in all the other lifetimes so we didn't get it wrong in all the other lifetimes hmm. all of the other lifetimes were individualized lessons that we had to learn one lifetime we had to learn what it felt like to be poor 
One lifetime, we had to learn what it felt like to be rich. One lifetime, we had to yeah. uh, experience being a man, experience being a woman. One mm. lifetime, we had to experience what it was like um, mm. to create something and so on and so forth. One lifetime, we had to lose something dear to us and experience that loss. Mm. They're the different shades of love. And mm. you have to go through that whole spectrum. Mm. And the reason you go through that whole spectrum is to get to this era that we're in now, right now. Because at this point, mm. you as an individual have polarized through those experiences. Three lifetimes in, you might have decided, oh, I hated that lifetime when I was a narcissist. It was absolutely awful. I didn't like killing somebody. I don't ever want to do that again. I'm definitely going to follow the path of the light. Mm -hmm. And so then the rest of that arc throughout mm -hmm. the 26,000 years is all about the lessons of the path of the light. Early on, your classic narcissist goes, absolutely love this. Oh, right. Yeah, Th this is this is for me. Mm -hmm. This is the path I want to follow. Evil every time. Let's do it. And then they polarize fully. So in this place where we are now, mm -hmm. now we've gone through all of those lessons. You are now either fully on the path of the light or fully on the path of the dark, and you're ready to graduate from the third dimensional catalogue yeah. of lessons. Yeah, I was going to say, how do we know that we've come to the end of the lessons, though? How do we know that? How do we know that there's not another thousand lessons that we don't know about that we need? Because this is the time of the great shift. Yeah, okay. And this, <laughs> yeah. this, yeah. this <laughs> is, but this is beyond us as humans we always look at this uh, from a human perspective and lifetimes and this kind yeah. of stuff but don't forget there is something that's going on that's much bigger than humans right now and that is the ebb and flow of what occurs in the universe hmm. at this point in time that we are in now it is graduation point so what that means is I hate using this analogy because I hate AI, but pretend we've been playing a computer game for, you know, 26,000 years. At this point, you either get to choose that level or that level. Mm. All of us have made a choice. Right, we're going to stop playing this computer game now. I'm going to play that one next. Which one are you playing? Oh, I've picked that one. Brilliant. Okay. So something very, very big will occur mm. on the planet soon. Everything is lining up now. It's all lining up inside of our bodies it's lining up because people are having work done energetically inside of us inside of who we are work is happening but on a much much bigger scale things are changing in the universe and the solar system much bigger than us much bigger than we can possibly comprehend mm. this period of time that many of us have been brought into to talk about these concepts is a period of time whereby you have a choice do you go left or do you go right? Mm. Make sure you're in the right lane. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> That's brilliant. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel that as well. Like that's that's how I actually feel at, at the moment. That I can I can sense it's almost like apocalypse. And when I mean apocalypse, I mean well, it, you know, things have to end for something new to come through, don't they? There has to be a shedding of the snake skin. Yeah. It's that kind of feeling and i feel like we've already we've gone through that in the last three or four years i can feel as though we're kind of now moving into something new but the old snake skin is maybe going to be left behind and then that's in my metaphor and then that's going to be the ai it's going to be the, the smart cities and stuff and people want that you know in the matrix they said <laughs> another they said they're going to be um morpheus said <laughs> they are um so inured by the system they'll like hang on to it they'll you know as they'll, they'll fight for it that kind of thing even though they know they're being controlled. It's that kind of thing, isn't it? It's absolutely that. And I always say to people, The Matrix is a documentary. Yeah, it's, not it is, a, yeah. it's not a film. Yeah. It's a documentary. A lot, a lot of them are like that, aren't they? Yeah. Um, by the way, because we just, you know, we've gone over an hour now. I just Is it okay just to ask you like one more question and then we can... Absolutely. Up, is that all right with you? Yeah, I'm yeah. really enjoying it, by the way. Um, okay. I should have asked this earlier, but I've been making, I've been making loads of notes. <laughs> <laughs> well that's been, good <laughs> it's been going along okay because i had a conversation with a guy called paul levy and he talks about how we're collectively dreaming this experience into being 
And he says that the way to change this collective dream is to all work on ourselves. It's like, it's actually very in line with what you're saying. And, but as we heal ourselves as the individual elements that affects the, the whole, it's that yeah. kind of thing. But I was wondering whether, you know, you talk about these entities, is it not possible that those entities are still part of our mind? It's still a projection of our mind. They're not really separate to us. I know you talk about them being these separate evil entity that attaches, but on a larger cosmic level, are they just not part of the same one cosmic mind? If you look at it from a top down level, absolutely, because everything is source. Yeah, so even okay. even the entities are source. Yeah. So this is what I teach to my students. I say, yeah. you know, you can't hate these beings. They're part we, of we us. don't exactly you don't ever want to take that energy to mm. to to a session. You've got to feel the utmost compassion and love for these beings because they are a part of source, just as we are a part of source. Every yeah. apart from the rogue AI which punched out of another universe, everything is source. Mm. So from a very, very top level perspective, that's why there are so many universal laws that are in place that we have to adhere to and abide by. But one of the rules, one of the laws that source put in place is all parts of source mm. have to be able to experience whatever they want to experience in this universe in terms of their path of progression back mm -hmm. back to total oneness with me. So the evil ones who, oh, evil, the, the dark polarized ones, it's all perception, isn't it? Dark polarized ones have to be able to follow, eyes, follow what they want to do. Mm -hmm. The light polarized ones have to be able to follow what they want to do. And the two are not allowed to interfere with the other's journey. And that's why it's gone a little bit wrong on Earth, because what the negatively polarized upper fourth density beings were trying to do is artificially hold us back so that they keep us as a chicken farm, basically, yeah. or a chicken farm of light yeah. um, that they feed off so that they're, oh, we're all right. No, we're fine. Yeah, we've got these. This species is ours. Yeah, we'll keep these here. We're sorted. But they're not allowed to do that because there are laws and rules that the universe uh, operates by the universal law of free will has to be uh, followed so when somebody has been parasited upon against their will mm. then that gives us permission as healers if you like in this realm to help that individual take those entities off vibrate higher so that they're no longer going to be subjected to that moving forwards mm. many many people that are unawakened in this realm, uh, actually at a soul level, chose this experience. Yeah. And yeah, didn't we, all choose it? didn't we all choose to come <laughs> into this depth to yeah. have this experience? So what, what if we want to yeah. stay and have a little bit more fun for a few more lifetimes? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what, mate? If yeah. that's what you want to do, yeah, en enjoy it. I'm not leaving <laughs> until my football team wins the Premier League, all right? I'm not well, going to, you know... Um, I'll, I'll leave you with that one, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take, yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take the bus out of here. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was just going to ask is, um, how would you? Okay, how would you then know that you're healed? Okay, no, let me ask it this way. Um, for instance, I've got this thing where I fell in love with this girl. Okay, and um, she left to go to Australia, and all that I have left of her is the thoughts of her, and those thoughts just like loop in my head. You know, is that an entity then? That's Same an role. entity, Same is role. it? Yeah. Wow. And that's how they harvest. So they keep you sight. They they know you're and Jerry Mazinski will talk to you about this for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> he, think, yeah. He's very he's very passionate about this. Yeah. Um they will dig into your mind and they will find your darkest, deepest, most rawest parts. Yeah. And they will bring that up, cycle it round, round and round and round and round and round. Mm. Do you know why those thoughts come into your head normally when you're trying to sleep or when you're going to bed? What is it because they don't want you to sleep? Yeah, because when you go to sleep, they're not going to get fed, you know, for a certain amount of time because yeah. you're out. You know, we think that we're dreaming the whole time, but we're not. You're not dreaming the whole time. A lot of the time, you, you're not in rapid eye movement. Mm. So entities will go through a long period of time without being fed. So what they try and do is get a good boost 
a good, oh, I'll just get my final pint in before yeah, right. he goes to sleep. Uh, I'll dig up that old, oh, yeah, this one makes him really sad. Will, it's like, have you seen? <laughs> Go on, <laughs> line them up. <laughs> have you seen Inside Out? Well, yeah, I mean, Jerry Jerry got me onto that, yeah. It's like that. Yeah. And they'll, they'll pick, you know, right, let's let's stick that in there That's and off the we go. Well, actually, yeah. when I when I did a 10 day meditation, the passion of meditation, it was like it was trying to catch me. It's like it giving me a sexual thought. And I was like, no, nope, not having that. It gave me an angry thought. I was like, that's nearly got me. It was like <laughs> it was constantly yeah. going through a range of thoughts. Yeah. Um, sacral because it's sexual as well. Yeah. So, so sac sacral is sadness, sexual connection to mother. So. Right. It's, it's highlighted an area for you where it knows it can feed so it keeps but how would you how would you stop that loop though they won't stop that loop no. until you get the entity taken off but right. for you personally yeah what what you can do is thought stopping mm. so this is a technique that i will teach the people that i work mm. with every mm. time that thought pops into your head say no mm. quite firmly yeah and then think of a really really positive experience that you've had in your life mm. the, the the most positive experience, the best thing that's ever happened to you. Yeah. I potentially wouldn't make it about that girl, though. If yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try and think of something else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then you infuse the two together, and the high vibration is almost like osmosis. It will draw like the negative and and it evaporate it into the high vibrational thought, right? And it reprograms your brain because the brain yeah. is used to doing negative loops, negative thoughts, because it's something to do. It's what the brain does. But, but if, it, we, if you give it, it new instructions. Yeah say no we're not doing that yeah we're doing this instead and this feels better you only have to do that 21 times until the brain right. goes no we don't do that anymore I'm, don't you remember yet we don't cycle around those things anymore we do this now and then it creates new neural pathways oh, yeah. and then some, something else is is born we're not saying that all negative emotions are entity attachments though are we we're just no. saying that it's the ones that you chronically engage with and loop around they're the ones that are entity attachments right Absolutely. All negative emotions are not entity attachments. Yeah. Having negative emotions is a part or has been a part of the third dimensional human. But what I would suggest to anybody that wants to evolve mm. and move into that uh, evolved human is think about every negative emotion that comes up for you and try and find the lesson in it try and find the gratitude in it try and find a space within you where you can forgive where you can love and you can alchemize that negativity into positivity because what you will then find is that you won't attract entities and you will be vibrating higher and you will be living in a different world in a and your world changes world. is what we're saying because as you start to heal you know i said earlier about paul levy what he was saying as you start to heal yourself the your external world changes as a referent of that, as an expression of that, doesn't it? Yeah. But right. we're not saying that like the physical reality changes, but it's like the, the way that you see the world is different. I'm guessing it's like looking out into the garden through a muddy, muddied window or through a clear window. You yeah. know, if you have a muddied window, you're always going to see that garden is muddy, but if you have a clear uh, glass screen, then you're going to see it as clear and pure. And that's how your world will look. It's kind of like that, isn't it? That's what we're yeah. saying. Yeah, absolutely colors are more vivid everything seems different even the nasty people or what would be perceived as nasty you feel love for them you can't feel anything other than mm. love even a person can attack you in the most grievous and heinous mm. way and you just you feel love for them because it's like when you realize that you are a part of source that everybody is a part of source but that you're just a part of source that realized you were a part of source before other parts of source realized <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you start to see the world in a different way and you know when someone's nasty to you part of you just thinks oh bless them that's what don't, i think yeah I don't even know who they are <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, I don't know if it's the right thing but i just i feel, almost feel sorry for them that like rather than getting angry i just feel a little bit like oh poor you you know yeah that's it yeah, because but... it, it it feels terrible I mean, I can't even begin to imagine actually how bad it must feel living in this world right now, unawakened. So scared. People must be so scared. Fearful. And we saw the, actually, we saw the physical representation of that with the masks, I think, because that was literally telling you what's going on maybe in the astral or etheric. I'm not quite sure on those terms yet, but 
were literally seeing in the physical reality what people were doing metaphorically, which was to silence themselves, to submit. It was yeah. like we it was like that was coming through as a metaphor and externalizing and crystallizing as a mask for loads and loads of people. So we could actually see physically who are the people that are awake and who are the people that are, you know, bootlicking, you know, like going along with the plan. You could see it now physically visualize like 2020, 2020 vision. Yeah. We actually got to see what was happening in the metaphorical world, in the energetic world, physically um, through these symbols. Right. Yeah, I would agree completely. And throat chakra as well people were silenced mm -hmm. literally silenced. silenced and then you well then you had don't do you remember don't breathe <laughs> i can't breathe no sorry not don't breathe it was um <laughs> it was, i could imagine them convincing people to do that no, no sorry no but it was um do you remember the george floyd stuff happened it's like i can't breathe and then everyone was walking around with like um i can't breathe i can't, I breathe. can't breathe and they had and that they did, on some of them had them on the mask they didn't realize yeah, yeah they, and then they, were, then they were doing the blackout squares on social media so you actually had um i can't breathe i can't speak and they were doing the blackout squares. so it's like i can't see you know so it was like that was happening metaphorically in yeah. real time it's all symbology it's all there isn't all it symbology. Something, something else as well and yeah. you will appreciate this because you're in the uk yeah. all of the colors that they used for all of that campaign with the nhs was all blue and yellow, yellow. And Ukraine, remember? Blue and yellow. And that is always, this is power and domination from the negative side. Because yellow is solar plexus. Yellow is confidence. Yellow is who you are. It's the ability to stand up for yourself. It's power. It's whoever holds the yellow holds everything. Really? Because they say, you're, you don't be yellow. As in like a coward. Oh, what's wrong, dude? You yellow? Nobody calls me yellow you know they flipped that well yeah the inversion of it and yeah. then blue is the ability to vocalize it's the ability to stick up for yourself it's the ability to um rally others as well isn't it through your voice mm. so through taking the yellow and the blue they took all of that color and it, and it almost feels like they were trying to take I that think... color out of our spectrum like they were trying to take it out of our rainbow you know when you look at um mm. Game of Thrones as well, and the mm -hmm. Masters of Marine, their dress was all blue and yellow. They were the masters. They dominated all of the slaves. They had all of the control. So the slave masters were dressed in blue and yellow. And all of that happened around the same time. Game of Thrones, right. the, the um, then we had the U. So the Ukraine blue and yellow took over after the NHS blue mm -hmm. and yellow stuff. So those two energy centers are very very important blue and yellow so they, they're going after here and here right so they're going after game of game of throats yeah game of throats <laughs> um yeah okay so they're going after those that's it it's funny because i during uh, that clown vid period i got i've still got it now i've got like a like a mucus or, or like a drip in the back of my throat i wonder if that's connected to not being able to speak out and feeling silence you know it could could almost be that couldn't it it absolutely could be that, yeah. And yeah. many of my clients, that's that's some of the symptoms that they will um, say that they've wow. got that, yeah. that we work on in the sessions. So let's talk about your sessions then. Let's do you want to like? Yeah. I know we've mentioned it throughout, but do you want to really, you know, say the protocols and like what you do and who should come to see you and the websites and everything else? Yeah, sure. So um, I see clients for personal sessions. Um, yeah, it's an hour of psychotherapy at the front end. So. I will um, speak to them about their life. I'll find out all of the traumatic things that occurred and mm -hmm. help them to to process those and shift them. Then I hypnotize them mm -hmm. and I connect directly to the entities that are attached to their energetic body. I speak with them. I find out oh, right. who, they, who they are, right. when, when they attach to the person, why they attach to the person, what they're doing to the person, who they work with so the client gets to understand the full picture behind everything that's been going on with their bodies physically energetically and emotionally then I remove the entities and then once I've removed all of the entities so we do that for every single chakra and for the whole body as well so that mm. there's no entities left attached then we re rebuild the energetic body and the aura then after that, if you book two sessions with me, se session number two, I will take you through quantum travel. So you get to do past life regression. 
and then we bring forward to your higher self. We do another energetic check to make sure that we didn't miss anything in the first session. And we find out from your higher self why you chose to come into this crazy place at this time, what your mission is, um, you know, all of your questions, basically, that you want answering, why you chose to have entities, <laughs> you know, the, the deeper picture. So that's my personal sessions. Then I teach um, students how to become a hypnotherapist and do what I do. So I teach mm. full entity release, uh, past life regression, the full arc of hypnotherapy. And um, we have accreditation for that as well for my, um, for my course. Mm. And also, I have just launched a brand new course, which is for parents to be able to learn how to clear themselves and also to clear their children. Mm. So the idea behind that is that the next generation or the future generation of humans or the now generation mm. of humans are going to be all unplugged from these parasitical beings and we can take our world back, basically. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, I can, and I can feel that that's, that's what's going to, you know, that's what's happening. You know, we're going to, hopefully shed all the negativity off all the the darkness off right well it's like we're we're that stage aren't we like the splitting of the cell as you said yeah yeah and everybody is free to choose which path they Mm. want to walk down there's no judgment there some people like you said earlier some people Mm. do genuinely want to spend more time in 3d because they like they like to do the 3d things and that's fine Mm. that's absolutely fine but for those of us that are ready to move into that higher dimension that's all about heart energy then i want to create a path through my work to help people to do that and you know don't forget these are these sessions as well and and jerry um Mm. kind of touched on that when we had the interview together myself and jerry Mm. the people that are suffering from schizophrenia and psychosis and, and, and all of those types of conditions all that is is them being able to hear the entities that are attached that's it it's yeah. not a chemical. It's not a chemical imbalance. It's not. Oh, I've got. I've just got some voices in my head. They can hear just as I can hear yeah. when I connect to somebody's energy. They can hear the voices of the beings, the energies that are attached to them. So when you remove those energies, they don't hear the voices anymore. Yeah, it's they like are. the movie Nefarious, and if you've seen it, but it's exactly like that. You know, the guy was like flipping between the the human hips self and the demonic entity uh, projection. Yeah. I have heard of it. I haven't watched it because yeah. it's, that's too much like a day at the office for me. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah, it's like <laughs> trying to unwind watching uh, yeah, the same stuff, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Not for me, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Well, Disney, I was going to recommend a nice <laughs> bit of nice Disney eye candy, candy, but that's no good either, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really, really good, uh, um, Laura. Really, really good stuff. And um, I mean, you probably even couldn't have this conversation 10 years ago because it would have been so far out there. But I. Th- yeah, it, it really goes to show how much where the consciousness is rising that you can have these conversations a lot more lucidly and openly now, and people don't react so like, there's no knee jerk negative reaction to it anymore. It's just sort of okay, I've heard, you know, it's starting to build a crescendo. It's reaching a tipping point now. It's more and more accepted. Um, I mean, God bless Ike for it, really, because he he did it. You know, he really took a lot of bullets for coming out with that stuff. He was so, the first one, wasn't he? Yeah. So, you know, and he, he's had to live a life of ridicule for it. So, you know, I really put, a, you know, put a lot of gratitude on that man's head, you know, um, for what he did. But I definitely feel we're at that stage where it's all now starting to come out. 2020 it's all really starting to notice a lot of things. My world's changed even in the last three years. Like I'm never going to have any jab, let alone the, I used to be sympathetic to some of them. But you know, now it's just like, no way. My whole view on the pharmaceutical industry has changed. I won't even go near medicine anymore, let alone, you know, drug, any drugs now. Like it's, that's the last thing I'm going to take. And everything that yeah. they want to give you a drug for yeah, can be found in nature, the natural version, yeah. and that will yeah. heal you properly because then you're in vibration with the planet of which yeah. you are a part. Yeah. You know, it's, it's everything. So, when people come to train with me or study with me, I try to revolutionize and change their entire mm-hmm. life, all areas of their life. All areas. That's the important thing. It's holistic yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah. 
absolutely so you're living in a different way and then there will be a huge group of us at a certain point that are just so vastly different because just think about how much we're raising our vibration how Mm. much the other group are lowering their vibration we're going to be so dissonant from each other soon that we can't actually exist in the same space together you won't be able to see them i think it's going to be a way that in some way you just won't be able to i don't know they're just maybe i don't know how it's going to be like that but have you seen go on <laughs> yeah <laughs> have you seen the celestine prophecy no i've read it i've read the book yeah well if you can try and watch the film as well because it oh, really okay. visually brings it to life in that but okay. in that film yeah they experience being aware of the lower vibration but the lower vibration can't see them oh that's it yeah that's that's really it isn't it it's right yeah. there in the film I mean, we're starting to see it digitally online on social media where like I'll keep posting my Instagram stories and I'm, I check on my Facebook because it connects to there. Every time I go on there, I'm getting like 20 less <laughs> followers each time. It's like yeah. self-purging for me, you know, <laughs> it's like removing them. And then I get the odd one going, really love your story. It's so brave of you. So it's galvanizing some friends and purging. Yeah. I call it like a, a social media detox. Yeah. Like I'm detoxing Perfect. all the people that aren't on my I don't want that sounds arrogant, not on my level, but you know what I mean? We're not, on, we're not, we're not um, vibrating on the same frequency anymore. So they're kind of, they're just like falling away without me having to like push them away. And that's great because it's like, okay, I'm okay with that. I don't need to hang on to anyone. You know, I just yeah. see it like that. And um, yeah, so we're, we're on social media, that kind of not being able to see each other because they're just detaching. You know, it's a little, yeah. you know, but what yeah. that looks like in the physical form, I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> yeah, it's what a time to be alive, though. What you reckon? A time. Do you think? Yeah, I, you, I, are, you, are you positive, though, or not about things? I'm positive all the yeah. way. Yeah, all right. I, I think the, yeah. the times that we are living in right now, I know it might appear scary, mm. but that's only if you look out there and listen to what they're trying to tell you is scary. Yeah. Focus on what is real focus on what you are connected to right now in this now moment ground outside in the Mm. planet daily connect to the planet daily Mm. drink good quality water eat good quality foods that are Mm. from the earth remember that exchange of energy that we talked about earlier don't eat processed crap eat foods that are from the earth but where do you even get good water from like even things like water like where would you even get good water from well the best water is spring water or yeah. well water ideally directly from the mountain um, that's yeah. the dream isn't it i know that's the dream you know because the thing is we are still stuck in a bit of a synthetic world and it's difficult to get that source food the source yeah. water and stuff like that but yeah just make the changes that you can and, and make the changes that you can you know do do something every day that's that's going to make you further towards that positive yeah. energy rather than the the negative side of things and i think mm. the technology i know i'm very aware that that's enabled us to have this interview today but we've got to completely unhook from the technology every day you know go out into nature leave your phone at home mm. reset your frequency with the planet so that you can bear working with technology for the time that you've got to but then reset back with the planet and get yourself vibrating as high as possible. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I actually went, I actually hugged a tree last time I went out. Yes, <laughs> yes. I've become I a tree it. hugger. <laughs> it happens to all of us. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I do do. So I try and go barefoot in, onto the grass as much as possible. It's just so like muddy at the moment that it's like difficult yeah, it's... in the winter. <laughs> you know like this, <laughs> i'm kind of waiting for like to dry out a little bit then i'll start earthing because also i spoke to a guy and he said um he's a health expert um daniel reuters he says part of detoxic detoxifying the body is you have to ground yourself because it opens up the cells and allows the toxins to come out and release if you don't do that the toxins build up in the body so grounding um actually helps you to release a lot of that so connecting to nature you're absolutely right yeah it's very very true so yeah. it has to be a part of our daily routine. And if you think back um, through all of the in- indigenous tribes and humans where we started off, we would always be barefoot. We wouldn't even yeah. wear shoes. I know. We'd be barefoot connected to the earth. And we don't do it anymore. And that's partly the problem, isn't it? Yeah, mm. absolutely. So yeah, that's that's what we must do if we have the opportunity to do it. 
uh, socks off, shoes off, feet grounded into the earth and hugging mm. trees wherever you can. Yeah, okay, there we go, yeah. <laughs>